One mean world, one creation dream. Hello guys, this is the Ayokor again. And today, we are going to learn a lot of things about the new circuit system in MiniWorld. I see a lot of you were requesting this, and we are going to teach you how it works. So, for those of you that didn't know that, with the last update, MiniWorld changed a little bit the way that the circuits are going to work. So today, we are going to go deeper, I'm going to teach you some of the basic items and blocks and how it works, so you will be a pro in this kind of situation, okay? So guys, let me start first by teaching you what are going to be the main functions for the circuits, okay? Let's go! Celestium is the new kind of material for, that you can use for make circuits, okay? It's used for a lot of mechanical things. As an example, you can see here that you can buy or build a machine that can do things like this. As an example, I'm turning it on here, like different specific um, greens on the on the front so you will see that depending on what button I will push I'm going to turn on a different uh, row of the system so this is only one as an example also you can do different kind of matches as an example you can do rotation machines like the one you're gonna see in the screen right now or as an example you can do moving parts of the system like the one you're going to see here And the most simple one, you can turn on some basic matchings, as an example. You can turn some specific devices to push and pull some blocks, or you can do and activate some specific electric features like this. Or also you can do advanced machines like this Rubik's Cube, that you will be able to move completely free, depending on what piece you touch and you want to manage. Or also you can do some exclusive parkours like this one, who is moving, if I'm not fast enough. Perfect, now that you know a lot of uses for this, let me start with the introduction. So first let me show you what is the Celestium. The Celestium is a block and a set of items that you can find in MiniWorld. You can mine this block and you will be able to get Celestium crystals. So the Celestium Crystals is used in single player and also in survival to get all the Celestium items, okay? So really important with this guys, the Celestium can be made, you can use a solvent for this, but also you can get the Celestium Crystals just by using your inventory in creative mode, okay? So what is the Celestium? The Celestium is the name of the power of the energy that you can have in MiniWorld. So we have a lot of Celestium items, like this lamp, this lamp can be turned on and turned off just by placing Celestium blocks or giving energy to it, okay? So every Celestium block is going to have two different states. The first state is when it's completely turned off, and the second one is when you turn on these machines, okay? Another property of the Celestium blocks is the amount of energy or the Celestium energy signal strain. So you will see when you turn on um, Celestium block, you can measure how much energy is getting just by using this tool, which you can find in your inventory, is the wrench. And the wrench, you can use it on the output. Remember, every block is going to have an input and an output. The input is where the energy comes in, and the output is the energy releasing or sending by this block to another device. And with, it, with this tool, you just can click on it, and you will see a number right here. So the number is the amount of energy strength that this specific block has in this specific moment. Now that we learn what are the basic proprieties of these specific blocks, let me introduce you to one of your best friends. One of the most basic blocks in this tutorial, the Celestium Light Beamer. What you need to know is that when you are speaking about Celestium, you are going to have power source, but this is going to be the most basic one and let me introduce to you the block, okay? So, what is this block for or how it works? It's really simple. You can use this as a power source, that means to turn on and turn off another Celestium blocks, another circuit blocks, okay? When you turn on this specific device, it's going to activate a wire 
that is going to be output on the front. And this specific wire is going to send signals to the closest plug. It's going to start with a full power of 50. That means that the strength, the celestium signal strength for this is going to be 15. Okay? And as you see, when you place it on the floor, at the beginning, it's going to be turn it off. You can place or turn on this specific lock by different ways. The first one is you can place a switcher or a button that we are going to see in a little bit in any of the different sides, okay? And as long as one of the sides is activated, you are going to see that the yellow is going to be activated. That means that it's going to start signals in the specific direction you place it. As an example, you can use another items to turn on this specific device. As an example, I'm using here a Celestium block and also is going to turn on the device. By the way, the only way it's not going to be activated is if you place an activation, a power source on the front of the device, okay, on the output. If you place any device on the front, you're going to see that it's going to be activated when this block gets activated. Remember, this line is called the Celestium wire, and is the one who is going to provide energy to the block. Next, we are going to see the Celestium Diverter. It's a really useful tool that you can use to expand the energy of your light beamer. Okay, so what you do is that you can place this on the floor. You need to put the input facing the Celestium wires. You're going to recognize the, the face that is looking like an input because it's going to have a square shape and the other sides are going to have a circle side and what it's going to do is it's just going to expand the signal wires to any of the sides that you want to change the side just click on it and then unclick you can see that you can choose all the four sides of the sides and also the top and the down part of the block of course you cannot place that in the back okay and it's really important to know that because if you place this the other way, it's not going to work. Remember, this part is also always need to fit and face this specific side of the Celestium Light Beamer, okay? All right, great. Next. What is important also is to know that also this is going to have an input of 15, just as any turn on the box at the beginning, okay? A pretty... Yeah, side that you are going to turn on is going to have the same amount of energy when you release it. Sometimes you will need your circuits to get a little bit delayed, to get a little bit slower in between the two activation devices. So for this, we are going to cover the next block. And what we have here is the Celestium Delayer. What it's going to do is that it's going to delay the signal so you can do a, a timer just for wait for some circuit to be activated, okay? So let me show you how it works. Right now, if I turn on this device, it's going to be turning on automatically, instantly. But if I place this device, once more, always the output needs to be facing the line beamer and the output is the one who is going to send the energy is going to slow down a little bit the signal, okay? So, it's important, on the top you are going to have the signal, if you click on it, you can activate and have it more delayed. Let me show you. As you see now, it's taking a little bit of time to turn on, okay? So if I place a lot of this, and I'm going to change this to reduce the amount of energy, Okay, so now it's going to have a big delay in between the activation and the final result of the lamp. Okay, also if I turn off this, it's going to take a while into to be turned off. Now, let me introduce to you a new concept, the Celestium Blocker. What it's going to do is that it's going to reduce the signal strength of any connection and you can change the levels, okay? So let me place this. Once more, the output needs to be facing the block that we want to activate and the input needs to be facing the light beamer or the power source, okay? And if I turn on this, when I release energy from here, it's going to have 15 of signal strength, but after going 
through this specific lock is going to change to seven. So it's the way that you can reduce the amount of energy signal strength. Also, as the previous block, you can change the levels of this. So now it's going to have eight. If I click again, it's going to have 11. And if I click again, it's going to have four, okay? So as you see, you can also use this to change the signal powers. Also, you can place more than one. And the result is going to be different. As you see, we have the half of this. And it's important to know that is going to reduce at the first level to the energy to the half. In the in the second one is going to reduce also the energy to the half, but it's going to be rounded to the lower number. So right now, getting out from this is going to have three because 15 divided into is going to be 7.5, so it's going to be rounded to seven. And seven divided into is going to be 3.5, but it's going to be rounded to the lower number, which is going to be 3. Now that we have covered all the different basic tools, we are going to learn about the power sources. So, the power sources is any kind of device, any kind of item or block that can turn on Celestium devices. The first one, you already made it, is the switcher, okay? So notice that the new switcher is going to be different to the old one, the one that we used to have in Miniwork. This one is not going to turn on directly most of the devices. As you see here, it's not going to work directly by activating this Celestial Lamp. What you can do is you can activate any Celestial-like beamer, as you see in the previous lessons. Okay, the next one is going to be the button. And it's a big difference in between the button and the switcher. So when you turn on a switcher, it's continuously sending energy until you turn off the switcher. Instead of that, the button is going to work when you click or tap on it, and it's only going to send a small signal. After that, it's going to be automatically turned off. You see, there are two different ways of use a button because we have two different buttons. The first one is going to be the touch button. How it works is really simple. You can place this on any side of the light beamer and it's going to work or it's going to be activated if you click on it or tap on it. Or the second way is just collide with the button. So if your character collides with the button, it's going to be activated. You can see here. All right, and the second one, which is going to be the ordinary button is going to work the same way, but this can only work if you just click or tap on it. So meaning that if you collide with it, it's not going to do anything, as you see. Now we are going to see the transducers. The transducers are a good way to activate traps or doors or open any other kind of device. We have four types of transducers, and all of them are going to work really similar, okay? So let me start over. We're going to start with the ordinary, which is the most simple one. What you do for this is you are going to place that one on the floor, and what it's going to do is going to activate any kind of light beamer or celestial block that can accept contact just by passing by over it, as you're seeing right now. The second one is going to be the transducer touch that is going to be the one that i have right here and what it's going to do is that it's going to accept any kind of pressure so how it works what happened is that the previous one the ordinary one is going to work only if any kind of creature is going to be over it but the second one the one that we are going to see right now is only going to work if and any kind of item is over it that means that you can release an item over it and it's going to work. Let me show you the example. So if I just move over it, it's going to be activated. But also, if I release a, a specific item over it, it's going to activate this circuit. Instead of that, if I do the same with this one, nothing is going to happen. The next one 
is the transducer made by sandstone, okay? That is going to be this one that I have here. It works exactly the same one as the ordinary one. It's only going to detect if you move over it and the person or the creature that is over it is a player or a creature. Once more, it cannot turn on if you send or put an item over it. And finally, but not least, we are going to have this specific one, that is the bamboo one, or the creature transducer. And how it's going to work is really simple. It's not going to work if you have a player or an item. It's only going to work if you place a creature over it. Meaning that can be an enemy or a neutral creature like an animal. Another important thing is going to be the trigger blocks. Those are really useful power sources. Most of the people think that you can only use it on sports, but actually you can use them as a sensor. What does it mean, guys? Means that you can use and place this to activate circuits, and you have four kinds or four types of trigger blocks, okay? The first one is going to be the trigger, okay? The touch trigger block. And how it works is really simple. If a creature, if a player, or if a ball, just enter inside it is going to activate the block that is next to it. As an example, you can see that as long as I say stay right here is going to activate this, but differently from the transducer blocks, you can do something like this. You can place a big amount of this and it's going to transmit the energy to the next one. It doesn't matter if you are exactly next to it, okay? And also really important, you can also do this, you can turn on directly the blocks without need it of a lead light beamer, like this. The second one is going to be the creature light beamer. Let me show you the example, we are going to use again a chicken, but let's use another one. Where is the chicken? It's right here. Alright, so for this example, you are going to see that if I access a supplier with the trigger one, the trigger, the creature trigger one is not going to be activated. But if I put a chicken on it or any kind of creature and I put it on in or in inside this specific net, this specific trigger is going to activate this, okay? Even if I move the creature, it's going to be off. And even if I put this creature in the last one, is going to be activated. The next one is going to be the ball trigger block, okay? So how it works? How it works is really simple. It's just going to activate the light beamer or the blocks that they are around it if you throw a ball on it, okay? That means that if your player or a creature is not going to be activated, the only way that you can do it is by using a ball, okay? So if you hit a ball inside, you're going to see that it's going to be activated. The next one is going to be the physics trigger. And the way this is going to work is that once you place this, it's not going to detect any movement creature or player, but it's going to detect items with physical characteristics like this one. That is the box, okay? Let's put the box inside. And as you see, is going to be activated. Also, you have the option to basically change what this specific item can detect. If you want this to detect only a specific item, you can place it here just by clicking on it. And it's only going to detect if those items are the ones that are being inside the terrier. If you play any other item that physical characteristics that is not on the list, on this specific small inventory inside the block, is not going to detect anything. And finally, but not least, we have the Celestium Pattern Celestium block. It's a little bit hard to pronounce, to be honest, but it's one of the most useful. What it's going to do is going to turn on any block that is next to it. But this is important, it's not only going to power blocks like Celestium Beamer, also, it's going to turn on directly some blocks if you place this block around or next to the Celestium block. We now need it of a specific signal. But it's really important, you need to test out, it's not going to work with all the blocks. Just with some of them, okay? 
Finally, but not least, we are going to learn how to use the Grinch. As I showed you before, the best or the main use for this is that you can know how much energy strength is outputting from any kind of device, okay? Also, you can measure how much energy is getting inside the specific Celestium block, but it also has some other functions. Most of the blocks didn't have this, but some specific blocks have an alternate version that you can turn on by using the Grinch. As an example, the button, the normal button is going to turn on and off just when you press it, but if you right click on it with a Grinch or tap on it with a Grinch in a cell phone or in a tablet, you are going to see that it's going to be transformed into the continuous mode. And the function for this is really simple. When you press on it, it's going to be automatically turning on and off every X seconds. So every, I think is, I'm not sure, but I think is every half of the second is going to send signals and it's going to be automatically turned it off. This also works for the other button. Any of the two buttons are going to have the same function. Once more, this is one is activated any time that you just hit on it. And the second one, the ordinary one, is just going to be activated when you click on it directly. As an example, we also have the robot arm. This is another useful tool. When it's completely off and you hit on it with a wrench, you are going to transform into the power mode. What it's going to do is going to increase the distance. As you see, the previous one only worked like few blocks. This one is going to work up to 15 blocks, okay? Now we have the other block that is the robot arm, but it's going to be the pull and push. This is really similar to this one, but it is going to take also the block that is on the front and it is going to bring it back. Once more, it is going to work the exact same way. You see it a fewer distance, but if you activate this, you're going to see that it's going to activate, be activated with the powerful mode, which is going to have the same range of the normal robot arm, okay? Now, important as an example, the rotor block that you can use to move blocks around is going to start turning it on or turn to one side when you push on it. If you use a range on it, you can measure, of course, the energy, but you can chase, change the side that is going to be turned on or it's going to move. Also, it's really important this. You can also, without any tool on the hand, you can change the way this works. You can press on it and you're going to see that it's going to change. Meaning that in the first level, it's going to move all around. And here, it's only going to move one block or one... Um, yeah. It's going to move just to one side when you turn it on. When you press this, it is going to block, move two sides. And when you press the last level, it is going to move almost completely. And once more, if you place again this, it is just going to do the same of the other, but it is going to just do it one time. Mean that it's not going to continuously turn it around, it is just going to do it once. Alright, and finally, for those activable blocks, we have the laser the hidden core head what it's going to do is that when you turn it on it's going to release this laser if you are in playable mode it's going to make you damage but the way that you can change this is by turning it off and if you click on it it's going to be into the powerful mode means that the laser is going to have a distance of 32 blocks meaning it's going to have a wider range okay this is for the normal blocks but also, we have some specific extra functions for the light sensor and the physics trigger block, okay? So the light sensor will allow you to be turned on or turn off uh, depending on the amount of the light on the block that is around them, okay? So right now, as an example, when I'm located, if we see the map, we are going to see that the amount of sound is 15. That means that we are completely on light time. But... If I change this, we can make it change, and it's only going to be activated if we have enough amount of light. As an example, if I change the light to zero, it's not going to detect anything because it's nighttime. But if I activate this, like this, it's also not going to do anything because we, we need at least one of light to be activated. If I change this back as an example like this, 
is not going to work. It's only going to work when it has the same amount of light on the scenario that the one that you're placing here. As an example, and here I have 15. All right, so once more, if I change to 15, it's going to work. If you use the range over it, it's going to change. Now it's not going to work about the, the light, it's going to switch to the altitude mode, meaning that it's going to detect the hail that you are located with. So if you are in a, in a different weight or this sensor is in a different hail, it's not going to work. You can measure the hail here. You see we are in seventh. And finally, we have the trigger block. When you click on it with the wrench, it's going to be transformed into the matching trigger block, okay? And how it works is that it's going to detect matchings. If any matchings like uh, bikes, boats, spaceships, robots, or vehicles, are going to be passing through is going to send signals is going to turn on any light beamer something i forgot to mention is how it works or how the robot arm works okay so once you turn on a robot block a robot arm block is going to push the block that is just in front of it okay but this is going to be really important you need to use a block that can be moved okay so if you see we cannot turn on remove this kind of blocks but we will be able to move another kind of block let me show you the example if we have wood in, on the top it's going to push the, the wood but as this is the normal robot block it is not going to push or pull this back to its position okay instead of that if you use this robot block the arm robot block as you see it's going to push but also, the block is going to still attach to it, so every time you turn it off, it's going to just pick it up that block and it's going to bring back to the original position. As an example, let me show you this example. If you use this like this, it's going to be activated, it's going to take the block, and when you turn it on back, it's going to take the block for him. And that's it, that's how it works. All right, thanks. Thank you so much for assisting to this tutorial. Remember, my name is Zayokor, and I'm going to be your teacher for the Mini World University program. You can contact me in Discord, in the official channels, in case you have questions. I will be more than happy to help you. I wish you a good day, and thank you so much for seeing the tutorial. Goodbye.